Let's talk about the sixth episode of the season. We're now past the halfway mark of series 12. We have arrived at Praxius. Um, written by Pete Mateeg, um, well known for last year, last season's episode, Kablam, and also working on the collection Blu-ray sets, directing and um, being on behind the sofa and bits and bobs like that. <coughs> now, Praxius. Um, I'm not going to lie, I probably had reasonably high hopes for this episode. But they were also slightly lowered, because um, much like how I had high hopes for Orphan 55, because Ed Heim was writing it, and who wrote It Takes You Away, I had similar hopes for this episode, because it was written by Pete Mateek. Um, while I don't think Pete Mateek has disappointed as much as um, Ed Heim did when he wrote Orphan 55, I do think this is not as good as Kablam. Um, like... There's just so much, there's a there's huge structural issues, I think, with this episode, particularly in the first half. Um, uh, I think the first half, there's just too much going on. Um, there's too many characters in this episode, I think. Um, I liked the message of this episode. I think the message about the microplastics in the sea and, like, from, you know, from, from you know, like, you get microplastics in, like, shampoos and in all kinds of things. I think that's an important message to be heard. And I think it did it more tastefully than um, Orphan 55 did, which was very obvious and in your face. And although I like the scene at the end of um, uh, Orphan 55, it does feel quite out of place in a drama. It feels more like, like a lecture but it's a very well composed scene. Is really what I was trying to get, um, trying to say about that is, um, well, that it feels a bit odd, out of place in a drama, but it, it's a very nice little scene. It's a very well written scene and very well performed. But here, the message about microplastics and this disease being in the microplastics is quite an interesting one, and also quite a one that um, everyone can relate to. I think because um, we've all done done the odd thing we're guilty about lying things that are bad for the environment let's face it none of us live a zero carbon lifestyle um and it was it's really um it really hits home particularly um with my sister who obviously likes to buy lots of hair makeup stuff and i keep on telling her oh do the microplastics and how damage your skin how will damage your skin and everything and i think this episode was came probably a good time hopefully she listens to it because i think you know, looks aren't everything. I'm, I'm sure you should care about your planet more than you should care about your looks. And that's my stance on it. I know I'm a guy and I probably don't understand how um, the the urge to look how society pleases. But I don't know. I just don't get that urge, to be honest. Uh, I don't get makeup and I don't get any of that. But again, I'm a guy, so it's probably just not my thing. But yeah, that is something that I think really... Again, though, the BBC are hypocritical because much like... um. <clears throat> I was looking at the new Doctor Who figures, and obviously they're made of plastic, um, which I'm sure, and the packaging is made of plastic, and I wonder how much of that plastic from the action figures will end up going in the sea. Who knows, someone might chuck it down a river and then, you know, all water meets the sea eventually, you never know. (coughs) So I was just wondering about how hypocritical it is, really, because the BBC makes plastic action figures. Um, I wonder what the carbon footprint produced by that is, but it is an important message, granted them that. Now let's talk about the main cast of this episode. We'll talk about the fam, the um, main gang of this episode. The fam, the gang, the main team of the TARDIS. I think this episode, to be fair, is the best distributed the characters have been. Um, I said at the start that the start of the episode is quite rushed. There's a lot going on. I say that mainly because... um, I think the only reason why there was so much going on and why everything needed to be in different continents is because they needed to split up the companions. Um, I do believe that splitting up the companions is probably the best thing you could have done, and each companion in this episode gets a memorable thing to do, except maybe Graham, um, who once again becomes the Yaz of this season, I think, um, in particular. Um, Yaz got some nice moments uh, with one of the vloggers. I can't remember their names because I've only watched this episode once, but... Uh, the blogger that didn't die, um, <clears throat> uh, he had some, I mean, Yaz, yeah, Yaz got some nice moments with her, um, so did Ryan, actually, um, Yaz, when Yaz goes off to find that bit of technology that ends up teleporting them to the undersea, um, sort of rocket ship that's been made out of all this plastic, which is coagulated together, um, Yaz gets some nice moments there with her when they wander about, she thinks she's found an alien planet, um, or an alien colony, which I thought was funny. She was really with her face when she was disappointed when she when the doctor reminded her she was just under the Indian Ocean, uh, which was nice. It was a nice little moment for her. Um, 
Um, Ryan also has some nice scenes with that vlogger at the start of the episode. Um, uh, he lets her check her bag, and they clearly have some chemistry because I said, particularly when um, when they're going on about the uh, idea that uh, when the the vlogger make pats him down to make sure he isn't holding any guns, I said to him, the person sitting next to me, I said, um, said to my mum, uh, she's just taking things a, a, a chance to um touch him up, and it was true because she was like she just, she touched him again twice on his chest. It was like you work out. I was like, I was like, is that in a, is that a bit appropriate? Is that appropriate for live TV? Um, well, it's not live TV, but children's family show. But it was very funny. They had they had some good chemistry. I think another I think something that's been happening with Ryan a lot is that they're just trying to get him, like sort of what's the word um. It's like they're trying to get him partnered off, I guess. Trying to get him to have a love interest that isn't Yaz, because no one wants Ryaz for some reason. But uh, no one wants Thasmin. Well, clearly the Ryazs don't want Thasmin to be a thing either, because um, she was ru- Yasmin was rude to uh, the Doctor, so clearly no romance at all, um, which is a good thing, I think. Um, Graham, once again, gets nothing to do. I did think it was really stupid, actually. Like, um, out of both Graham and Ryan, neither of them knew what a pathogen was. I thought that was a bit... Maybe that's just me being obnoxious because I know what a pathogen is. I'm thinking... I mean, maybe it's because... I don't know why they needed to have both Graham and Ryan not know what a pathogen is, because it's pretty obvious. I mean, I don't mean to be rude, but it is pretty obvious what a pathogen is. It's a disease, um, basically. Um... Like, one of them could have known. Like, it would have been nice, because if one of them had known, it would have been nice for, say, Graham, who's older and therefore wiser, uh, to have a moment and explain what a pathogen is, but instead he's just, like, shrugs his shoulder and said, oh, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to look stupid. I was like, like, did not one of you not know what a pathogen was? I was just like, it blew my mind that none of them knew what a pathogen was. We did have a twist villain, um, but to be honest, much like um, I saw long before the Doctor... Um, saw it coming, that they all had labs and then this lab didn't seem innocent, didn't seem suspicious I thought, I thought yeah, if every other lab is suspicious, this lab's going to be suspicious too, um, but yes the lab was indeed suspicious and we had the twist villain um, who's an alien and she's brought um, this disease from another planet Jodie Whittaker is on top form, there's no one to outperform her or overshadow her this episode she, so she gets a good role here as well uh, there is a lot, there is a big guest cast in this episode, um, so many so that I can't be bothered to find pictures for them, because I think one thing this does have in common with the one from 55 is the obsession with a really large ensemble, um, there is a nice couple, um, a nice, um, couple in this episode, uh, they have good chemistry, I think the two actors that, um, were playing those roles were both, um, both had good chemistry, and I think it was nice to see their relationship develop across the episode, um, and the astronaut was, he was quite probably the weakest link maybe of that re- of that relationship. He he was just coughing and wheezing and playing the sick person for the episode. So I mean, uh, his. But I do think they had good chemistry, and it was nice to see a gay couple that didn't just die, <laughs> because that just seems to happen on Doctor Who for some reason. Uh, what was the um the two vloggers? I won't lie, they were a bit annoying. Um, I think it was really annoying that she kept on asking, oh, surely you know my vlog and, and everything. I was like, yeah, that's really obnoxious and annoying. I was like, she asked it with every single person. It's just like, are you really under a rock? I was like, surely you can't be that big if no one knows you. <laughs> I think you need to get maybe think about what you're saying and maybe think about the state of your vlog if no one knows what you're saying. But it is a bit... They were a bit annoying. I won't lie. Out of the um, out of the cu- the couple and the uh, vloggers, I think the vloggers were the most annoying. the The two scientists were quite good. I thought um, the uh, I can't remember her name now. The one that turned evil. I thought she was probably she gave quite a good performance. But her co-worker sort of just got forgotten. Oh wait, no, she he got killed, didn't he? But he didn't get much to do either. I think it was it was a bit. It was a bit all over the place at the start. It was it was very messy at the start. But I think the bit as soon as they got into that underwater, under the Indian Ocean plastic sort of structure, I think that's when the episode started to pick up a bit. I think, but it did have a very uh, bad start. I think I was quite nervous at the start. But yeah, I think this was overall a good episode. I think the uh, the lighting was quite good. I like how the lighting subtly changed for each episode. Um, 
Uh, the main cast were on point here. They didn't have a particularly good guest cast. It reminded me a bit of Series 11, the guest cast, although the couple were nice. I think they were... Well, no, they were married, weren't they? But they're still a married couple, so I can say couple, right? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but it did feel a bit all over the place, and they, it felt very rushed into, and I don't think they needed as many continents. But I think at the end, the direction, the lighting, the music... Um, all the things that normally work out for Doctor Who did work out here. I think the light, it wasn't very, I was thinking throughout the, um, particularly in the last act, I was thinking how fun would it be to be on that set? It looks so fun. Um, all the bits of plastic on the air. I mean, that's probably really bad for the environment that set itself, but uh, I thought it did look cool. Um, but yeah, I think I think all the characters that did, with the, all the uh, individual groups of people, I think the two scientists had chemistry. They had a nice little scene between the two of those two scientists about talk about just before um, the doctor arrives, screaming, trying to get some help. But, uh, the uh, lovely couple, um, they had good chemistry. I think they were strongest part of the strongest part of the guest cast. Um, that guy, I um, can't remember his name, the guy that wasn't the astronaut, that was an ex-police officer, um, he was in Big Finish, which I thought was um, interesting. Maybe we should have more Big Finish actors in Doctor Who. I know a couple of them have been to and from Doctor Who. But <laughs> I know someone remarked on Twitter that finally this actor will not be able to not have to pretend he's holding a gun. He gets a real gun, which I thought was a nice little moment for that character, hopefully. Um <clears throat> I just didn't like the vloggers. I think like, it's kind of funny me as a YouTuber saying, but uh, maybe it's because I'm a relatively small YouTuber. I mean, I don't have over a hundred subscribers. It'd be lovely to have over a hundred subscribers. I doubt we'll ever get there, but <clears throat> I think it was um I think they were just a bit annoying. I think they kind of I think they kind of display the uh, um the stereotypical YouTuber, and I don't know if that's particularly accurate portrayal because I do I've never met a particularly famous YouTuber so I can't really tell you but I mean I have got one friend who has over 100 subscribers who plugged all his video plugged all his videos in his in the WhatsApp group that we all chat on and I'm thinking it's like even I don't do that and I'm and I have half as many subscribers as you but um <clears throat> but yeah overall I think it's a solid episode I think the direction was all good the music was all good um I just think the start and the first half was not particularly good. But all the characters seem to work well, apart from the vloggers, I think. But yeah, so that's this episode. I'm going to re- I'm g- It's episode six, and I'm going to give it six out of ten. Is that allowed? I think that's allowed. Um, <clears throat> not the strongest episode, not as strong as Kablam. Um, which is kind of annoying, because I think all the guest writers who've come back from last series don't feel as fresh as they did last year. Maybe it's because um, Chris Chibnall's upped his game with his stories. And I didn't. I wasn't quite sure what Chris Chibnall had co-written for this episode because there's nothing outstandingly obvious that's to do with the story arc. So maybe this was, I don't know, maybe Chris Chibnall had to play script doctor with this. Maybe it was a lot worse than we originally thought. Maybe it was an Orphan 55. Maybe Chris Chibnall should have script doctored that one as well. But we'll see. I don't know. It's interesting to know why he did um, have a co-writing credit because you wouldn't notice it. Unlike last week where I was very obviously noticing where he had um, written in that scene. Unless the, these creatures... Oh, also, the um, the gas mask people didn't really get anything to do. We don't really find anything out about them. I'm still a bit confused about what they were. If, did they just all die? I don't know. Maybe they all... I mean, did the Doctor go back and help the ones that were left behind? I don't know. Because there were quite a few in Hong Kong, weren't there? So, I mean... Yeah, but yeah, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. I think it's fair um, for this episode. It's not the strongest of this season, and Pete Matigue has did better a lot in Series 11 with Kabbalam. But, I mean, I like this episode a reasonable amount. I don't think it's bad. I don't think I'll ever come back and rewatch it. I'll maybe rewatch it uh, like I usually do once between this episode and the next episode. But I'm interested to see next week. Um, uh, next week's episode is Can You Hear Me, I believe, and it's on at... 10 past 7 on BBC One, so you'll be able to tune me here. Tune in afterwards here on Whovian Espresso for my review of that episode. It looks quite interesting. It reminds me a bit of, um, from what I saw in the Dexter and trailer, it looks a lot like um, Amy's Choice. So that should be interesting. But yeah, 6 out of 10 for this episode. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to um, like and subscribe down below. And yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good evening.